Have you ever invested in the stock market? The first time I ever did, I was making some quick money on Tesla, and I thought I was the next Warren Buffett. Of course, that was until my next genius investment, Dogecoin. And yeah, but unlike me, there are people who have made a lot of money trading, like one Vincent Kasuga. Except his fortune wasn't made through gambling on cryptocurrency. Instead, Vincent Kasuga became a millionaire through trading onions. So this is Vincent Kasuga. Now, despite looking like the leader of a cult in this picture, Kasuga started out life as a pretty pure and humble guy. He spent the first quarter of his life a devout Catholic who farmed celery, lettuce, and onions on his farm in upstate New York. When he decided it was time for him to make his mark on the financial world, but instead of the stock market, Kasuga decided to trade in the mercantile market in Chicago, which is basically just the stock market for crops. He started off selling wheat, but like my ill-fated Dogecoin investment, the wheat index was not working out. Oh my god. Honey, I just got a letter from the bank saying you withdrew all of our money. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I came across this really profitable investment. Oh, okay, what did you invest in? Oh, uh, you know, it's, it's like a really profitable investment. I'm sure it's gonna pay out. Did you buy wheat again? No. No. Yeah, we're filing for bankruptcy. I'm not joking, Vincent was such an abysmal trader, he had to remortgage his farm, and his wife made him promise to never trade on the mercantile market again. And for a short time, Vincent did actually keep his head out of the market. But you can't keep a good man down, and you definitely can't keep a good gambler down, because eventually his inner addict decided it was time for round two. Except this time, Vincent had learned from his mistakes. No longer was Vincent gonna be trading stinky old wheat contracts. Vincent was moving on to bigger and better things. That's right, baby. You know him, you love him. Onions. Now, to you, an onion is probably something you don't think much about. But on the mercantile market, onions are the most valuable crop for some reason. So Vincent started trading onions, and something must have clicked for him because he started popping off. Through hard work and manipulation, he slowly started to carve out a fortune for himself. And I'm not joking about the manipulation part. There was a lot of manipulation going on because Vincent started to play dirty. For example, he once bribed a news station into saying that there would be a flash frost. Now to the untrained eye, this might seem like the most useless bribe ever. But to my onion heads out there, you'll realize this was a genius move because freezing weather equals dead onions equals expected a drop in supply of onions equals onion prices are through the roof equals Vincent's laughing to the bank. Dubious and probably borderline illegal stunts like this was Kazuka's bread and butter to make his riches. But that was child's play compared to the master plan that Vince was cooking up. That's because in 1955, Vince and his business partner Sam Siegel came up with an extremely risky play. But before I can explain Kasuga and Siegel's idea, I need to explain what an onion future is. Wait, no, no, it's, it's really simple, I promise. Basically, buying a futures contract is like pre-ordering a video game. You are paying a set price for something with the expectation you will get that product in the future. In the same vein, onion futures are basically buying onions at a set price before onions are actually grown and harvested. So back to Kasuga and Siegel. They figured if they both pooled their entire net worth together and bought as many onions as they could, they could pretty much buy all the onions that were being sold on the market. And if they monopolized all the onions, they could control the price of onions and profit big time. So Kasuga and Siegel prepared, and in the fall of 1955, they went on a buying spree, trying to own as many onions as possible, then to compensate for any new onions that were were harvested and sold, they bought all the onion futures available. When the dust was settled, Kasuga and Siegel owned 98% of the onions on the mercantile market, which basically means they effectively owned every onion in America, all 30 million pounds of them. Honey, why am I getting another letter from the bank? Okay, I made another investment, but this time it's actually a really good investment, honey, don't worry. I thought we said no more investments. What did you invest in? Uh, you, you know. What? What is it? Onions. What did you say? Onions. Speak up, I can't hear what you're saying. Onions. Onions? Yeah, yeah, onions. All the, all the onions. I bought every onion in America. I want a divorce. I understand. So like I said, Vince was not the proud owner of 30 million pounds of onions. And 30 million is at the point where numbers don't really mean anything because it's too big of a number to really quantify. So to give you scale, 30 million pounds of onions is equivalent to 384 African elephants, 12 Boeing 747s, and then the entire weight of the Eiffel Tower all added together. Or, on the flip side, 30 million British pounds could also buy you a used 1998 Corolla with 200,000 miles on it in the used car market right now. So since Vince owned all these onions, he needed a place to actually house them while maintaining the quality of these onions so he could eventually sell them back to the market. He initially thought he could fit all these onions in a little warehouse on his property, but there was not enough space, so basically, he had to set up warehouses all across America to store these onions for the time being. Anyway, with all this onion power, Vince called over all the big heads of the onion business for a meeting. Hello? Hey? 
Thanks for coming, guys. My name is Vincent Kasuga. I go by Vinny D, and I own all the onions. Oh my god, this is crazy. What is he gonna do with all those onions? All right, now listen. Since I own almost all the onions, I want you to sell onions at this price. And if you guys try to sell any cheaper than the Vinny D price, TM, that's trademarked, I'm gonna drop a huge onion -y load on the market and bankrupt all of you. I guess we have to accept. Why did he say onion -y load like that? Yeah, that sounded gay as hell. All right, we accept your deal, but what's stopping you from selling all your onions behind our back? Come on, guys, I'm Vinny D. You can trust me. He does seem pretty trustworthy. Why is he called Vinny D? His last name's Kasuga. Sorry, I had Indian food last night. Okay, we accept. <laughs> See, this was Vincent's game plan this entire time because Vincent had bought shorts on onion, which basically meant if the price of onions went down, Vincent made money. So Vincent helped lower the price of onions by selling all 30 million pounds of onions back to the mercantile market at once. He ended up selling so many almost expired onions and the price of onions got so cheap that onions were actually worth less than the bags they were being transported in. Onions were literally given out for free to orphanages and homeless shelters and they still ended up having too many onions. It was so bad that a lot of onions just ended up being thrown into the Chicago River. At the same time, entire cities were entirely out of onions because all of the town's onions were now being shipped off to Chicago. Anyway, in the end, Vincent walked away with somewhere around $8.5 million, or when adjusted for inflation, around $97 million in today's money. Of course, the money was only made through bankrupting a bunch of onion farmers, many of whom ended up unaliving themselves. But it's cool because Vincent ended up donating so much money to the Catholic Church. He met three different popes, so he's probably still going to get into heaven. Anyway, Vincent's stunt ended up catching the eyes of Congress, who wanted to get Vincent in trouble. But really, he hadn't done anything illegal. But to make sure something like this never happened again, they passed the Onion Futures Ban Act, which basically banned onion futures. Yeah, it's pretty much in the name. Anyway, this whole thing makes me think that if futures were only banned for onions, isn't it possible to do the same thing with literally any other crop? And if I just gave some random billionaire this idea, who for some reason is watching my video, uh, you trying to help a brother out? Please man, I got student loans. Anyway, as for Vincent, after his onion fiasco, he started a restaurant called the Jolly Onion Inn. Aside from that, he's basically best friends with the Pope like I said before, and also somehow survived a fucking plane crash when his plane ran out of fuel, like it literally ran out of fuel midair and nosedived. And he was completely fine, apparently making a quick recovery. And then he kicked the bucket in 2001. And that was the man who at one point owned almost all the onions in America. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please click like and subscribe. Also, catch me live. I'm streaming here almost every weekend. And yeah, man, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Goodbye.